Hi, I'm Ryan Jenks. And I'm Bobby Hutton, and today we're going to test some string bolts. So this is actually not Ryan. He's actually uh, hanging out with his girlfriend. So I decided to sneak into the lab. This is our friend, uh, John Fioroni. Uh, John, introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your experience. Yeah, so I'm not Ryan. Um, I'm a, a caver and I've been caving for about 29 years now. During normal times, I get to spend about five weeks underground doing exploration and research. I'm one of the co-founders of the Cave Exploration Society and we have expeditions going on in Cuba, Iran, Turkey, and Kurdistan right now. Perfect. Um, John, you want to tell us a little bit about what we're testing today? Sure. These are soft anchors or AS anchors, if you want the French acronym. They are used primarily for deep caves and expedition caves in Europe. They come with a five millimeter Dyneema string. Uh, they're bored for an eight millimeter bolt, so traditionally used with a spit anchor. To make these worthwhile, it's best to throw out the one meter of cord that comes with them and replace them with uh, about one and a half meters of five millimeter Dyneema. So why would you use that as opposed to like a normal hanger with a quick link? These are a bit lighter and they allow you to place an anchor a above a, a sharp edge uh, where the Dyneema can, can wrap around the edge and, and not break. And these allow you to bypass a quick link or a carabiner where you can tie the, the cord directly to a figure eight and right. save a bit of weight. Is this something you use a lot? I use these in, in some of our expeditions in Turkey. Uh, they have a little bit of popularity kind of in the, the Northwest of the US, but they're not used too often over here. So in the, the climbing world, um, if we wanted to do something similar, we would use this. Why don't you just use something like this? It's more about weight savings and saving volume in your cave pack because we're limited on how much we can carry into a cave. So this actually condenses into a much smaller package than a, a hanger and a quick link. And it's probably a third the weight. It is, yeah, it's much lighter. Traditionally, they're attached to a spit bolt with a eight millimeter bolt, but because we're not testing the, the spit itself, we've used a, a more traditional uh, threaded bolt uh, onto a block of steel. Uh, just so we can be authentic, what would you normally attach to this soft anchor? So traditionally in caving, we use an oval locking beaner, which we have here. Uh, but we also have the option of tying the Dyneema directly to a loop on a figure eight if we wanted to. Um, we might try that. Soft anchor. I originally thought that was some scarring on the aluminum, but what do you think it is, John? I think it's just a little bit of Dyneema melted to the aluminum hanger. Oh, totally. All right, John, show us how it's done. So this technique uh, bypasses a carabiner or a quick link where we tied the Dyneema directly to the uh, figure eight on a bite. And you can use this in the middle of the rope. You don't have to have the end of the rope. Correct. So this will technically work, uh, but for a safety, you would loop it over the top like this and then bolt it to the wall and and then attach it to the wall exactly would it be easier if this cord was longer yeah so this is a, a good reason why you don't want to use a meter of cord but uh one and a quarter to one and a half meters of cord is better uh it gives you a little bit more slack here the knot doesn't get sucked up right next to the, to the hanger uh, and it makes it a little bit easier to tie and it gives you more options for different variations I keep these just for using them as redirects, but then I normally tie them with about a meter and a half of cord. Okay, and and what kind of cord is this? This is five millimeter Dyneema cord. It's a Dyneema core and a Dyneema sheath. 
It's important to use a five millimeter cord that is 100% Dyneema and not a nylon sheath on it for maximum strength. Soft anchor, uh, test three, this time with an eight millimeter rope tied directly into the Dyneema string. I'm a little surprised that the eight millimeter broke first, but not surprised that it broke in the knot like every other test that they've done. So those were the climbing technology, uh, caving anchorages, soft anchors. A viewer sent us an alternative. Those of you who have been watching a long time will recognize this as one of Ryan's favorite things. And it looks like it is around a just like aluminum round stock, stock that has been bored out and threaded. So let's see what these break at. So we have it screwed into a bolt. It is threaded and that's a spacer because this wouldn't thread all the way down and there's nothing really to grip. Um, if I was designing it, I'd probably remove the threads from this and then just um, screw a nut down on top of it like a traditional hanger. Um, we've got an oval locking carabiner here because my Expert says that was the best. John, predictions? I think it's going to break uh, up in the radius here. I'm guessing it's going to break around 25 kilonewtons. And, what was that? Uh, kilonewtons. Oh, okay. Is that the right way to say it? I have no idea. I <laughs> learned from Ryan. <laughs> Uh, what do you think? <laughs> I was not expecting that. It actually blew out the sides of the soft hanger. And our soft shackle is a little damaged, but still intact. So that is stronger than the ones from Climbing Technology. So since our setup before bent the bolt so much, and that was hard to get off, uh, I used a smaller bolt, that's a 7 16 bolt, and it's bypassing the threads and just nut is tightened down on it, which is how I would install these. So yes, definitely better to have it flush where you're not having the bolt bending over itself. That could, kind of what we had, could almost simulate this being pulled in tension versus in shear. So, third test, third type of result. So our bolt there sheared off and I'm sure is somewhere in the lab. That is why we stand behind cover. And this is still intact. You can see there that it's deforming the Dyneema am steel, but it does not seem to be cutting it yet. That was our strongest result so far. Okay, John, what do we have here? All right, so to try to get the actual aluminum hanger to break, we've threaded some four millimeter SK99 Max Dyneema cord. Uh, this is supposed to be stronger than the five mil. And so hopefully that will break the hanger and not the Dyneema. Larry came to visit and he's gonna give us a prediction on what this breaks uh, at. 1350, 1350 pounds, you convert it. Okay. Yeah, I think that sounds about right. It still breaks around the radius of the of the hanger itself, which seems like it makes sense for being the weakest point. Over 50% stronger than it's rated for. Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah. it's substantially stronger. There's a pretty good safety margin. So John, uh, thanks so much for coming down and breaking stuff with us. What did you think of these guys? Are you still gonna use them? I'm still gonna use them for deep caving. They have no place in kind of the recreational caving area. Uh, they're a specialized hanger and they work well for their intended uses. We learned that they tend to always break around the, the radius, which makes sense because it pinches the Dyneema. This one was sent in by a viewer. It's a homemade soft hanger. It worked very well. There's a few areas to maybe refine. There's some sharp edges on the inside and then the radius uh, maybe could be expanded just a little bit. But the idea of having it on a soft shackle really makes a lot of sense. I think we need to test some cyclical loading on it uh, to make sure it doesn't come undone. But I do think these have a, a place in expedition caving for sure. Bonus test. I was bummed that I missed John, but it was cool that Bobby and him got to break 
those cave samples since John's a caver. But I wanted to know what they did in tension and I had one of each left when I went back to the lab. Well, that's intense. Here's another piece. This did not break. I mean, it's not in great shape, but it did not break. Wow, that is an interesting chart. So this happened. I want to see what this does in tension. This thing held. I'm impressed. There's some pretty sharp edges against this Dyneema stuff though. And since we're testing some obscure cave anchors, I thought we would grind off the bolt that's on a clown hanger and install it onto our rectangle jib. And then I started with an eight millimeter rope, which broke the rope first because the rope goes around the bolt. And then I stuck half inch rope on there, which is the biggest rope I had to see if it deformed the hanger at all. And it did not and the rope broke first. So then out of sheer curiosity, I clipped a carabiner to the damn thing and it broke pretty low, lower than any other hanger I've ever tested. Granted, you're not supposed to clip a carabiner to that. Now, for some reason, I cannot find the footage that has the numbers on there, but I remember it being like nine or 11 kilonewtons to break the hanger. And then the ropes broke more or less full strength, but it's irrelevant because you're just ascending or descending on those ropes, which is about one or two kilonewtons. So, the clown hanger is pretty creative though. I appreciate my patrons for supporting this nerdy niche content because it's probably not gonna get a ton of views, but I think it helps know what these things break at if you see them in a cave. Head over to hownottoswag.com and don't forget to wipe and subscribe.